presentation today. I'm gonna do this in English. So um, my name is Liu Yu. I'm from a company called Aristocrat, and this is a, a listed company in um, Australia um, exchange, a stock exchange, and the the exchange code it's A L L, so it's not fake. I didn't make it up. And the industry I'm working in is gaming and casino industry. So um, we have 54% market share in Australia and in New Zealand. Also, we have 18% share around the globe with 800 million annual turnover in 2013. I didn't make it up either. You can check this on the annual report. So you type in Aristocrat 2013 annual report. You will receive 100 pages of annual report. It's crucial to read annual report before your interview. And um, yeah, I'm currently holding a position as assistant accountant and it's management accounting oriented. So, so in general accounting, we have finance, we have management. So my passion is management accounting and I will tell you why I'm passionate in management accounting. Okay, that's my name, that's the place I work, that's my position and okay. Okay, let's travel back in time a little bit. Um, I came to Australia in July the 22nd, 2008. So I just had my six years anniversary a few, a few days back. And I was from the University of Sydney. And my favorite model from my alma mater is the constellation is changed, the disposition is the same. So circumstances can change, your dream remains the same. Um, I'm holding a master, double master degree in manage, um, accounting and finance. Sorry, it's a bit dis distorted because um, this is a different format from, from my, my, my iMac. Okay, how do I know overseas oriental school? I, I had else lesson here a few years back. Else, else, else. How much we love, we love else? Yeah, because that's the prerequisite to get permanent residency. Without that, we, we, can't, we can't stay here for good. And, um, okay, and um, yes, I nailed it with a big eight. I'm really proud of it because I, I worked really hard. I didn't do that in one go. I achieved that, I think, the fifth time. Fourth time, I, I did it myself, the previous four times, but I couldn't achieve it. Yeah, for some reason I can't achieve it, but I, I did lessons here and Amanda, um, oh my god, this didn't show Amanda's name on it. So Magic Amanda helped me to achieve a big eight. So thank you Oriental School and I'm really honored to be back to offer my presentation and hopefully my experience will make some positiveness in your career. Okay, um, I'm going to talk about the, the really awkward and um, frustrating um, era, which is post-graduate and pre-permanent pre residency era. I'm going to keep it brief. So first job was, was offered um, through a connection in a student organization. So I was working in a student organization when I was in the University of Sydney. So I know someone through someone with someone and then I know the director of that company. So I was given the opportunity before graduation. It was an easy start compared to most of us, but it wasn't my, my, my true passion. So, so like I said, easy starter might not necessarily lead to where you really want to be. After all, it was a detour on my career path. So my experiences told me, if it's easy to get, you might have to evaluate it carefully because it probably it's easy to get and then you take it for granted and then as the time passed through and you might forget what you really want to do and why you really want to stay in Australia and why you were doing accounting at the first place. Is it because you're passionate about accounting or is it because that's the prerequisite to get permanent residency? It's nothing good or bad, nothing right or wrong. It just, you know, it's all about your choices. Just, just as a topic of today, it's all about choices. So chapter one for my um, career is trial and error. 
So why is a trial? Because I don't know what to do. And without a permanent residency, I, I can't really secure a position in accounting or finance arena. And with weak determination, because I really don't know, I really didn't know what I was going to do. So I was got a bit carried away. And then the tough reality is the job market was a bit, was a bit gloomy. Um, I think it's still gloomy right now. That's why um, we, need to, we need to work hard to get what we want. OK, um, sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. So why it was? It was a detour to my personal career. OK, I have a little table. As an accountant, we love tables. So the first reason is um, you know, uh, that job was a operational job in a insurance company. So it's a joint venture uh, from Exxon System to Le Concierge. So one is French, one is, um, one is, one is from the States. It's basically focused on hospitality instead of, uh, instead of finance. So firstly, it's not my dream. It's not dream relevant. So what is my, my dream? So I would like to, at this stage, I would like to keep it simple and keep it specific. So I want to further my career in management accounting area, and I want to be a significant influencer. So not necessarily I will be a, a leader or I will be a decision maker, but I want to support the decision maker I want to I support them with relevant, efficient, timely um, information. So that is my career goal at the moment. And secondly, why it was a detour for the career to take in the first place? That because that was not major relevant. So I think for that job, you don't necessarily need to be trained as a finance um, graduate or accounting graduate. You know, you can graduate from English literature to have that position. So again, it's a no, no, not re major relevant. And the third one, I was not interested in the industry in general. Um, the reason why I was that was because that was a hospitality industry. So uh, no offense, so working in hospitality, you need a lot of patience. And sometimes you compromise your patient to, uh, to, to get your customer satisfaction. So I don't know about this is my thing, or this is the generation thing, or this is a single child thing. You know, I find you know, I, I can't do that compromisation. You know, I can't serve customer um, you know, on, on, the, on the front line serving customers. Um, so I was interested in the, the industry. So that's a three note. So three no's afterwards, um, I evaluate the situation. So if it's a no, no situation, you definitely need to quit. So if it's a no, no, no situation, definitely we need a change. Mm -hmm. So 13 months later, it was the time for change. And before I talking about change, I would like to talk about uh, compromisation. So we all have our life to go on, we all have our bills to pay. We, we wanted to be independent. We, we don't want to leave um, and parents, parents support anymore because we're dull, we mature. We came here as master students, not as a baby. So, um, so the first job, nevertheless, is a compromisation. But, but sometimes we need to compromise a little bit because um, reality is tough. And, and we, need, we need the job to keep us going. So that's, firstly, you need to survive. And secondly, you know, upon survival, you can, you can actually plan something. So, but for compromisation, we, we also wanted to keep it in a low level because we, we don't want to compromise our whole life to the meaningless demeanor job. So yes, you can do compromisation. Sometimes, you know, my friend taking a job in the, in the restaurant, working at the cafe, you know, that's also compromise, compromisation. But we also wanted to keep it in a very low level. For me, compromisation took 13 months. So the note is, if you, do, if you do not like it, there's no way to make it right. So I don't like hospitality. I didn't like to be a customer service. So yeah, it's a big change. Okay, to, in order to find um, 
a job currently because I I read I read a few I can't say a lot I read a few research um, like really really valuable job are not on the market but I think at this stage still at my stage um, it's not that important so you can still seek job through traditional media and then you can still get what you want but moving forward um, you know for example you're a senior analyst or you know beyond it's 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 good to look at some other other options through social media so we all have iPhones Android we 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 pretty much live on internet every single day so this is the options I listed for how to make the most of, out of your resources. You have resources around you. Sometimes we take things for granted. We didn't even know the resources actually around us. So the first one um, is my favorite, LinkedIn. So at the end of today, I would like you to create your profile and connect to the connections such as your former colleagues, your classmates, and your lecturers from uni as many as you can because um, you couldn't believe it if you're using your email because I've been using my email eight years now you know Gmail thing so pretty much um, LinkedIn is smart enough to pick up the connections you have in your email accounts so by searching actually in LinkedIn um, it, you will be amazed how many classmates, lecturer you can find. Just typing their name, recognizing them through the photos, you can connect with them straight away. And also I maintain my, um, my LinkedIn account in the day-to-day -day basis because I would like to update my skill like, like budget, forecast, variance analysis, ERP, advanced, Excel, all those skills. I would like people to see that. Why? Because I, I would like to be exposed in terms of career. So I would like to be noticed because um, in the early stage, you want to be as exposed as, as, as much as possible because you want an opportunity. And the second one, I, when, I was in, when I was in uh, University of Sydney, so not only I, work, I worked in a student organization, you're organizing internship for the international students, but also I keep a really close relationship with the career career center so that's the you know they're there they get paid to help you you know you don't you don't need to pay them but they're there to help you they're there to help you with your resume um, they they are the first contact with you know the outside um, organizations you know they have opportunities that you might not see them and also friends around you you know, I when I was um, I think when I quit the first first job, I was you know constant constantly um, talking, calling my friend, and um, to see you know what they're up to, and then if they if they if they achieved a little bit more than I did, if they step if they step ahead, and then I I would like to know how, and it's not a shame to call them to ask them how, and then if you guys are good friends, I'm sure they would share and my friend shared with me. And also, um, CPA career fair and seminars. I'm not sure how many of you is doing CA or CPA. For me, it's no difference. Yeah, some people say, you know, CA might be better, but I think, um, yeah, we leave out of that. Um, there is CPA career fair event. It's, it's free. You will, if you register on their website, you get constant email reminder. It might be lunch. It might be it might be some seminar after work or seminar on on you know on a on a on a special occasion. Um, what are you doing? Um, what can you do out of C CPA career fair or um, uni career fair? Um, my personal experiences: I collecting business cards and starting calling and emailing and spamming because I have nothing to lose. Why well, I have left nothing to lose? I didn't offer anything. So if I can't get anything out of it, you know, that's okay. But if I can get one spot out of it, that's a win-win situation. Um, I remember I spammed, um, I don't know how many, I can't remember, but I do get some connections through um, CPA Career Fair, and I'm still in touch with, uh, with some of the consultants um, from those, um, some of the really big um, um, 
recruitment agents because I want a long-term relationship. I want to be friends with them, uh, not really good friend friends, but you know, recruitment agent they want to make money. They want to know how good the candidates are. So it's their benefit to stay in touch with you if you're really good. Um, so my personal advice is um, expanding the social cycle and get in touch with people. Doesn't really matter who you get in touch with. You know, I get in touch with Kevin. I got this opportunity to, to, to do a presentation with you. I got an opportunity to know uh, Richard from, um, uh, from Robert, Robert Half. So I got some interviews out of it. I know someone in Hayes, I not know someone in MicroPage. So constantly they were checking on me, constantly they were, not constantly, like once in a while they were giving me a call to see, so what you up to, are you happy with your current situation? So information matters, connections matters, you know, connection matters in China, for certain, connections matters anywhere. Okay, and then there's some um, traditional uh, media I'm using to, to spam as well. And also I would like to uh, mention about, you know, the, the point on, on the, on the um, left-hand corner. So it is necessary to make some phone calls and sell yourself to your dream career. I did that because um, I think the first, because between the, the third and the, no, between the second and the, and the third job, I was, um, I was pretty, um, would say, uh, frustrated and, and, um, and worried. But I still put myself together. But I, I, I had some little bit of experience by then. But um, after spamming some, you know, spreading my, my CV like vi virus, I still couldn't get any phone calls, anything out of it. So I was thinking, you know, maybe I, I can't wait for them to call me. Maybe I call them. You know, again, you have nothing to lose to call them. It was a little bit shy in the beginning. You know, you just have to work on your opening line, opening line a bit, a bit, a bit, you know, more fluent. So, uh, my name is so and so. Yeah, I was doing a system management accounting in an American cosmetic company, and then um, I had some experiences in this and that and this and that. So I would like to be interviewed. Would you like to have a talk personally with me? So I would like to talk to you about my career plan and then we see how it goes. So I got some interviews uh, through cold calling. So it's okay to call them. The recruitment agents are there to be called. So spam them with your call. Um, and, and seek. So seek is my one of my favorite because I like the layout, I like uh, the efficiency of that website, and I uh, you can even register on SIG, so you can create a profile. Again, that's the opportunity to get noticed as well. So register, register, register. SIG, you can register. Hayes, Michael Page, you can register. A personal experience, Hayes, H-A-Y-Z. Hayes, they don't really, you know, when I contacted the Hayes, I had just one year experience on, in accounting. And then they don't really care about that. So personal experience, but Michael Page does care about a lot. But Hayes, they really, they really value personal contact, personal flavor, you know, how you communicate, how you present yourself as, you know, as a professional, and how you function um, in terms of career. And, um, and also, thirdly, you can follow your dream employer, register on their career page, and then get email alerts. So I pretty much spam like, um, you know, favorite, my favorite uh, cosmetic brand when I was doing my research, like um, Max Factor, L'Oreal, um, yeah, all those. Just, you, if I can find a career page, I spam them. Nothing to lose. You know, just get yourself noticed. And um, yeah, again, make, make most use of your resources like career website, career center, recruitment agents. On recruitment agent website, actually like Hayes, Michael Page, or Robert Half, you actually can find some interview tips, which is really, really helpful. So like when I get an interview, not like a, not like a telephone interview, you can do telephone interview as well. Um, so a real interview, you do need some guidance. Yes, you're good. 
yes, you have experiences, yes, you are dynamic, yes, you are absolutely uh, capable of doing what you can, but it matters how you present yourself, how you answer the question and not fall into those interview trap. So HR and uh, recruitment agent, they have millions of experiences dealing with, um, you know, with, with the candidates. So you need to be cautious about what can you answer. Not necessarily lying, but you need to find a way to present yourself and then to, to present yourself in a really positive way. Okay, and then I think um, this website is the website I would like to recommend. Um, this is the only notes you can take today, you need to take today. So it's www.applydirect.com.au. Um, why I'm recommending this the, this website? Because um, I, I I bumped into this website just as an accident. You know, I was doing some research on Google. You know, because I think even though Seek, Career One, My Career, or any of those um, any of those websites, you know, um, they might have something slip through. So they might not cover everything. So that's why not only checking Seek, but also checking My Career. Um, checking other websites as well. So, but when I was exhausting with with all those options, I just googled it. So you can just type in assistant accountant, or or junior an anal analyst, or um, graduate accountant. Just just on Google, and this, this is a website I bumped into. What good about this website is you can actually um, see you know which employer is directing. Is, is directly posting their job ads, not through not through SIG, not through any any agent, but just by by their website itself. So by contacting, you know, um, the company, you know, directly, you actually avoid the extra layer of the recruitment agents. Because I had an experience, I was telling the agent. I want an opportunity in management accounting area. And of course, they, they want to sell me as soon as possible because they want to, you know, everybody wants bonus, everybody want easy money, everybody want quick money. Fair enough. I was telling them I need a management accounting position. It's either assistant accountant or junior analyst. I want to do forecasting, I want to do budgeting, I want to do various analysis. I'm interested in PL, not, not balance sheet. Okay, and then, um, Few days back, a few days later, they contacted me. Oh, they have this brilliant uh, financial analyst um, opportunity. They would like to meet me. But I read through the job description. They told, um, I thought, you know, that, um, you know, something not necessarily bad, but just not not my passion. You know, bad, um, you know, or um, just 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 bank reconciliation or all those stuff. You know, I told them, I'm not interested in that. Um, you know, I told them, but still. I went to the interview uh, with this employer in Shifley Square, Martin Place. And then 15 minutes later, I was actually telling the employer, I think I'm not the right candidate because I think we are looking for a different thing. And I got a congra congra congratulations from the employer saying, thank you for letting us know. And then we don't waste each other's time. So that's the thing, you know, because by dealing with a uh, recruitment agent, you put your personal career at risk, but you also need them because they probably have your job, you know, your dream opportunity. It's just a matter of fact, you have to stay focused, you have to stay, you know, grounded about what you really want. And also I wanted to mention about a internship. So most of us, when we came here, we didn't have local experience because we were international students. How can we have um, local experience, you know? Uh, so it's a, it's a really, really dilemma. So if you don't get your foot in the door as young as possible, you might not get into the industry whatsoever. So, um, but there is internship, some of them even unpaid internship. I did a two month unpaid internship. You know, I get something out of it. So, so when you search for um, opportunity, you can also search for like internship. So if they like you, you know, if you prove yourself to be valuable, there is opportunity. Again, you have nothing to lose. You know, you offer, yes, you offer two months unpaid internship, and then in the end, you, 
you, you, you, you, it was really sad, you haven't got an opportunity to stay, but again, you got two months, you know, hands-on experiences when you offer yourself out, you know, not only I was doing something, keep myself going, and also I did something to keep myself moving forward towards my career dream. So consider about internship, training ship, um, you know, volunteering. Yeah, just be cautious about your choice. You know, if it's a big company, if it's a well-known organization, it's okay for me to offer two months unpaid internship. So, you know, you focus on your future. And then for, um, yep, yeah, um, preparing for CV and interview, it can be a really, really frustrating, tedious, daunting, experiences but we just have to be hanging there um, so I would like to briefly talk about um, um, you know the thing but I think that's not a focus for the day so resume you need a well organized and grandma mistake free resume I spent seven hours organizing your resume every single time I want to change my job you know it's not a joke it's not a lie, you know, I, I, I need that much time of considering, you know, how I word it. You know, I, I, I was lucky enough to, to have my previous bosses checking, you know, the, the grammar for me. You need someone. So my recommendation is you need a third person. So you need someone, not yourself, checking grammar for you. Preferably this, this person, preferably um, um, native speaker. So you need you need um, you need a grammar free because um, um, every resume has a 15, 15, one five, 15 second survival time. So when HR identify one mistakes, bang, you're out of the line. So you might be the dreamy ideal candidate, but because of that, you know um, the resume slide through right away because of that. I might have mistakes in these slides, but this is the. This is um, a resume. Um, okay. And also, um, I, I hope, and I know that today for sure, uh, Mr. Gur is going to offer a um, interview session in, in, in overseas oriental school. So it's absolutely, you have nothing to lose to go to those, those sessions and you know, I'm a big fan of going, going to those sessions. You know, when I was in uni, I go to the sessions, even though clearly they say, we don't want any um, non-resident. Still, you know, I want information. You know, what if I am a resident one day? And um, also in Hayes, Michael Page and uh, Robert Half or Richard Lloyd, they, they, they do have free interview sessions. You know, they have professionals sitting there every day. You know, they, they, they are there to help. You know, contact them, call them. I need training. You know, they want they want training too. And then some of them, you know, my personal experiences. You know, half of the recruitment agent not from UK, so they talk in that you know posh accent. It doesn't necessarily make them posh, but they talk in posh accent. And then they, they some of them are fresh graduate. You, know, they want to train someone. You know, because you know they they want experience too. So it's, it's really a you know a, a two-way drive so in a way you help you help enhance the database for that job your recruitment agent and you want to get something out of it you know you help them expanding their database and they help you with your interview skill and uh, patient is a virtual and I am really bad at that because um, my personal experiences it took two to three weeks to actually get back from either employer or recruitment agent but during that two to three weeks, it was really hell. Because um, you're frustrated, you, you have self-doubt. You know, that will tremendously increase, you know, down the track of your career. Because, you know, in the beginning of your career, you, you, you haven't heard of anyone. Yeah, that's okay, because you're quite new. But after you got two years or three years of experiences, you know, after you spread, after you spreading your CV like virus, you know, again, two to three weeks, nothing has come back yet you know, you start self-doubting. So who I am, who I really am, you know, what my value is. Am I really, you know, asking too much? Or, you know, am I um, not suitable for any, 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 anything I wanted? 
and um, yeah so so I'm telling you so if you haven't heard from from those employer or job recruitment agent for for two to three weeks you know that's okay and also you can you can always follow up you can always call them you know it's easy it's really easy to find who actually you can call you can you can you can you can find them on LinkedIn you can find them on Google you know call them to see you know I just haven't heard from you and I just want a certain answer again you have nothing to lose Um, and um, I would like to talk about um, so knowing what you really want. So I'm not sure if it's a girl thing, or I'm sure not sure if it's the age thing. You know, you know, at the early age, early stage of my career, I I I really don't know what I was really want. And then if someone came over to me say, so what what do you really want out of your career? I probably would say, you know what, I don't know, and um, uh, I don't I. And then, and then, if you start saying you don't know, and nobody would, ki nobody can help you because they don't know where to start. And then you kind of, if you really don't know, you kind of have to make one. So, and then I would like to keep it uh, selective and specific, because like, um, so what do you want to do for your career? Uh, I don't know. I just want to be an accountant. Like what accountant? Transactional accountant, like AP or AR, or management accountant. Like like uh, focused on P and L or financial accountant focused on balance sheet or tax accountant focused on tax, so or payroll accountant focused on payroll. So we really need to be specific about what we want, cause cause you you really don't want to offer a I don't know as your answer to anyone, neither job recruitment agent, nor your your dream your dream employer, the place you want to work. Like, okay, and um, and setting up boundaries too. I think that one works really well with job recruitment agent. So you need a boundary. So if you don't want to be AP, you say you don't want to be AP. If you don't want to be AI, you, you say you don't want to be AI. So you can't really be that flexible to actually accepting anything which is offering to you. Because I know during the waiting period, especially the transition period from one job to another, to one industry to another, you know, during that transition period, people can get really, really weak, frustrated and, uh, and sorrow. So I was there, I was really sorrow, I was really frustrated, I was really, you know, I, 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 I even started looking jobs in Beijing and Shanghai. So yeah, I was like, you know, that's, that, if that's the case, you know, if I couldn't get what, what I want, I can always move. So I'd rather have what I want by moving than staying in Australia and doing something that I don't want, I don't want to. So my personal experience is be selective and be specific. So like you love someone, um, you know, love is different, love is um, regardless. So if you want to do Korea, I, I think we need to be specific. So management accounting is my true passion uh, because it is internal process oriented. So by doing internal reporting, you actually support your management team, senior, senior management, um, the, you know, the information that matters to this organization and also matters to your shareholder. And it might, it, it, it definitely detail than any um, you know, reporting you do to uh, ATO or to to um, to ASX. So it's internal process report uh, oriented. Uh, your goal is to increase the communication and enhance the efficiency of the whole organization. And also, internal report is is much more flexible than the external report. There's no universal rules apply. There's no universal um, format or style. You know, as long as you make sense, as long as you can achieve what you want to achieve, as long as you present your information to a most relevant level. So it's really up to you what you want, what you can do. And it's P&L focused because um, annual turnover, free cash flow, no, annual turnover and revenue is like the blood of the, of the um, 
um, of the organization like like EBITDA, I'm sure you have heard of it, um, EBIT, so earning before interest and tax, earning before depreciation, um, tax and amortization. So those those matters, you know, instead of looking at um, balance sheets. So balance sheet is, is less relevant than than PL in terms of um, growth for a certain company. So yes. And um, and the interview. So because that's the area um, I I sort of enjoy uh, down the track. It was a daunting experience, you know, when I was a fresh graduate or the th second job. But but down the track, I, I start enjoying the, you know, the 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 conversation and um, the communications and also a self learning and self reflecting experiences. Um, my experience is positive attitudes attracts positive energy. That's pretty much always. And you can focus on your strength and driving the conversation towards your favor. So like me, you know, I pretty much know very minimum about tax. So I would drive the conversation away from tax. So I would, you know, I, if, I, if the employer didn't mention about tax, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that way because that's just not my strength. So focus on your strength and drive the conversation towards your favor. So I would like to talk to supply chains, operational teams, sales, marketing, you know, um, for the information that I want. So I, I present myself, I, I view myself as someone who can communicate well. So I will focus on that side. So you drive the, you, you, lead, you, you gear the, the conversation towards your favor. And then you make negativ negativity positive. So I will illustrate that through an example. So, so interviews, examples. So I, this is the question I got, I think pretty recently. Um, you know, because I am still in my honeymoon period with my with, with aristocrat, because I just passed my 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 probation, you know, three months probation. So I'm still a baby in this organization. So I got this I got this question during my interview in April. I think, no, before that, in April, probably before Easter, I think. So instead of pursuing your career in accounting arena straight out of uni. I noticed you spend some time doing up operations. Is that even relevant towards your career goal? So I will figure out if you know if I was ever younger. But I actually phrase that I think in my favor. I think so. I say, as I'm interested in management accounting area, it was actually a benefit for me to know operations such as supplier chains and customer services. Admittedly, it sounds like a detour towards what I really wanted to do as I need to finance myself independently. However, I successfully managed my time to organize my permanent residency. In the meantime, doing, sorry, that's a typo, doing a stressful, ongoing, full-time job. So I actually emphasize successfully and emphasize stressful during the conversation. Because I read something on a random career website saying, you know, those especially managed, successful, passion, um, efficiency, those words, they wanted to hear again and again during your interview. So when you phrase that, however, I successfully, you may say successfully, I successfully managed a project in uni, I successfully, um, you know, um, support the supply chain team uh, during the uh, stressful lead time for their in inventory and I successfully yeah make it make it sound convincing and of course with convin with convincingness you 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 definitely need experiences with the experiences you need to get yourself exposed okay and um, so this is um, um, sorry I need to get so also during the interview, I um, so in the early stage of my career, I'm still in my early stage. So when I was a fresh graduate, I was a bit, you know, I'm not sure if it's a Chinese girl thing. I'm not sure if it's a personal thing. I was quite self-cautious. You know, sometimes you're feeling like you can get anything if it's a job. 
So if if it's a job, I'm happy to I'm happy to do anything. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do anything if it's just a job. You know, be selective. So it's always a double way drive because、um, they're interviewing you to see if you are if you are okay, suitable candidate for that job, and also you are interviewing them if they're good for you. So for me, I'm I'm I think myself is. I think myself to be a career-oriented person, so I want this employer to invest some money on me, because I think I can offer something more in return. So,、uh, during the second interview of my current job, I actually raised the question about the personal development plan, because I find something on their website, on their career website, to say you know they have、um, a half-year review,、um, so. For one financial year, you have two reviews. So, if you got four out of five, you actually have salary raise. And also, if you, you if you are the potential leader candidate, they actually want you to have more more trainings. And absolutely, you want to have your CPA membership covered. You want to have your CPA.、Um, you know the tuition fee reimbursed if you achieve. You know whatever you need to achieve. You know those things. Those things can be negotiated during the interview stage. So it's nothing to be ashamed to negotiate a salary, and、um, and also potential opportunities such as travel and relocation. Because currently,、um, my company just acquired a a gambling organization in Oklahoma.、Uh, Tennessee, I think, in the U.S. because sixty-five percent of the profit are coming from USA because、um, our our U.S. headquarters is in Las Vegas. So that's something I would like to explore if they ever offer me a relocation or if they want me to work there on a special project for three months. Why not? Those things you can talk about it, and also remuneration plan because I did research. For remuneration plan, when I was searching the current um, job, um, current uh, position, I get on Hayes. They have an annual salary survey. So by searching, you know the annual turnover. So you can actually match your salary up with the current market condition. So if you know the annual turnover, for example, eight hundred million, similar, and then a hundred accountants, you know, in 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 your group reporting. And then you can actually see, you know, as a financial controller, as a group manager, as a financial accountant, how much you should have earned. So I actually check on those information before I go into an interview, and I I, I negotiate it. You know, I think、um, yeah, it's negotiable. When I, I when I raise my price, they actually they actually told me yeah, it's reasonable for you to ask for that price, and yeah, so it's okay. It's okay, cause when we were in China, when we were when we were raised, you know, you need to be grateful for what you have, and then you need to accept, you know, the circumstances, status quo. You don't have to, um, you don't have to accept the status quo if you think you can have something nice. Always, you know, I'm happy to negotiate. Um, they're happy to negotiate, you know. And then、um, it's going to be the end of my presentation. I would like to,、um, I would like to con、um, conclude it with chapter three. You know, chapter one is, you know,、um, the awkward era, trial and error, and chapter two is、uh, seek and seize your opportunity. And chapter three is going to be execute, execute your career plan. So you may have a really wonderful plan. We have a wonderful plan for our life, for our career, but we just have to execute it. So for me, I know it's a never ever ending learning process. Every day I'm learning not only from you know not only from my mentor, my supervisor, but also from my team members. And from my friends, from 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 anyone, you know, you learn not only through what you have been taught, but also you learning through, you know, cross function communications. Because as management accounting, as I told you, you need to talk to sales, you need to talk to marketing, you need to talk to IT, you need to talk to, you know, the necessary, you know, the relevant parties you reach out to. So you're learning something from. 
from those people as well. You know how they function, why it's been like that, what's the business cycle, because you know as a really big organization, you know, because the bigger the company, the div- the more divisionized your your role could be. So the bigger your role actually a bit smaller. So it's for me it's crucial to to be involved with with any meetings, uh, information sessions, and then also just just by observation. So I think observation helps a lot. And then for me, this is just the beginning of my life. So I would like to I would like to absorb everything just as a sponge. And I would like to get a CPA full membership, you know, by the end of, uh, you know, I, I think meet next year. And technical skills such as large ERP system and advanced Excel, you know, those things pretty much as a must. So by dealing with, you know, tons and tons and millions of data, you don't want to use your eye because Excel is not a data entry. Um, it's not a data entry thing. It's really a data processing and analyzing tool. And luckily, Mr. Gejia is going to offer a, a Excel session after this. So if you're not hungry that much, I hope you will stay. And then, you know, this is the opportunity, nothing to lose. And um, you learn something out of it. You are win-win situation. And then also, one day you want to move from decision support to decision making. Probably not necessarily decision making. Probably you want to be an influencer. So sometimes you know things better than anybody else in your area. Like, you know, for me, I probably know better uh, budget in a specific IT section than my supervisor because he has just too much to do. So you want to support the management team or yourself would like to make that decision one day. And again, um, we need to be independent, critical thinking, problem solving person, and also we want to be team player because we can't achieve our personal goal without help from the others. And thank you. This is the end of my presentation. And um, thank you very much. And this is my personal email account. I'm using that for my LinkedIn as well. So if you would like to write me an email, absolutely welcome. And I would love to share with my personal experiences with you, with you. You know, not personal story, but personal experiences about my my career stories. So I hope you enjoy my presentation today. And then, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>